put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. The Typing of the Dead. A couple of years after the Curing incident, the AMS are sent in once again, this time to rid a city of zombies, and they're gonna do it armed with keyboards strapped to, strapped to their chest, or in front of them rather, and what I can only assume are PlayStation 1s with like a giant Duracell battery across the top of it on their backs. Yeah, that that's pretty weird and kind of goofy and that about sums up this entire game. There are a bunch of details I'm not going to get into with this game because as you might already know, this is essentially the House of the Dead 2 with a different, you know, with typing in place of aiming and shooting. So, yeah, you want, like, details about graphics, you know, dialogue, all that good stuff. Watch my House of the Dead 2 review. I'm not going to stand here and repeat myself. The thing that is different is the basic dynamic, and that's actually kind of interesting to talk about. With typing instead of aiming, there are of course a few things that you do lose. You cannot shoot random objects in the background, you cannot shoot zombies in the background, and, you know, the the tension works in a bit of a different way. There's also no real aiming. Basically, you just have to type out the entire word or sentence that is on the chest of the zombie. And, you know, when they throw stuff at you, it will be a one, one letter or one symbol, and you have to click that, and it'll move faster towards you. Basically, you, you know, there's less of a chance of earning extra lives in, excuse me, in this one. And, yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure exactly why that is, but it, I think they, they tweak the settings, the, so, you know, you don't earn extra lives. Yeah, in... In the House of the Dead 2, if you save X amount of hostages and X is a high number, you're going to get some extra lives at the end of the level, in addition to ones you might have gotten during the level. So, you know, that's gone here. And I believe you can no longer adjust how many lives and, you know, in the House of the Dead 1 and 2, you can set it to five lives and nine continues. This one, you have three lives per continue and only five continues, or credits. So, yeah, there's that. Now, earning extra lives is, you know, there is a feature for earning lives as you go, you know, in addition to, you know, some of the civilians you save are going to give you lives. I believe the same ones as in the House of the Dead 2. And yes, this is essentially... They've hardly changed anything between the House of the Dead 2 and this. There are a couple of new, like, goofy things, like instead of axes, they might carry mallets, and... The... There are a couple of places where there are zombies where there were no zombies before. But that's about it. Now... Yeah, you, you earn extra lives by typing words without error. Basically, every single time you type... Actually, I think it's just... 
it, there's, there's a meter, and it fills up gradually as you kill zombies, and it might fill up regardless. I, I gotta tell you, I've, I pay too much attention to my typing to worry that much about if the meter fills up, whether I type it perfectly or not. But anyway, there's a counter that says perfect, and each time you type, with type an entire zombie's, you know, sentence out without making a single error, that adds you one more to the perfect counter. And the more perfect you get, the quicker the meter fills up, certainly. And if you get, like, you know, if you get, I don't know, 20, let's just say you get 20, it might be when you accidentally miss that it then fills that amount up that it was going to fill up. And if you had gotten 25 and then you missed, then it would be that amount. I don't, I'm not entirely clear on how it works, but yeah. And once it's full, you get one extra life, you know. It's not a lot, and it's actually a really challenging game. But I guess which you find most challenging, this or the regular House of the Dead games, is really d dependent on if you're a better typist or, you know, first-person shooter player, I guess. Now, that's, you know, how you gain extra lives, but there's also a... There's this grading system with how, you know, you you earn points, the same as in the other House of the Dead games, and this time you're graded partially, you, you get these grades from A to, I guess, D. I don't think you can get an F, I'm not entirely sure. And it's based on how quickly you type the word on the chest, and as far as I can tell, this countdown of sorts starts when you type the first letter of one of the words on the chests. Now, there are a couple of things that you might be wondering in regards to, you know, how's this actually gonna work? Because there are several, several zombies on the screen at the same time, at times, you know, same as in the other House of the Dead games, and there will, of course, be several words at the same time. Now, the trick is, None of them start with the same letter, you know. They will be just different words or sentences, and the same letter does not appear at the beginning of one of these words or sentences on yeah, two of these, you know. It's always just one. So when you click that first letter, it selects that zombie, and it then shows both the full word and underneath the next letter you've gotten to. So if you, like, get confused or, you know, whatever, you can always look at the screen and, you know, it's actually, it's one of those games that are really good, you're gonna get really good at typing if you play this game a bunch. And, you know, you're gonna get good at the so-called touch typing, you know, typing without actually looking at the keyboard because you can't afford to be looking at the keyboard that much while playing this. It's... you really do need to be looking at the zombies at the screen. But yeah, so... You know, it will show you the letters remaining, and each letter you type is gonna be a shot to the zombie. So yeah, you can't do headshots anymore, but it will get just shot apart as you you know, type through the word. Once you type the entire word, the zombie falls over dead. There is... The, the, and the... The word balloon on the zombie's chest will start green, it will gradually turn yellow, and eventually go red and start blinking. The closer the zombie gets to you and or gets to attacking you, so, you know, you can also tell how much, you know, even without looking at how close it is to you on the screen, it, yeah. The, I, I do not think that you can, you know, that's another thing you sort of lose, but, you know, with, with this different dynamic, I don't think you can actually just shoot a zombie somewhere to slow it down. If you don't type out the entire word or sentence, before he gets to you, it doesn't matter how much of it you typed. You know, once it starts blinking red, and then, you know, another half a second or so, 
he'll have attacked you, and that'll be that, you know. But, yeah, so it is a, di a bit of a different dynamic. It's now about typing as much as you can, and near the end, it gets really frustratingly difficult. But again, it's, it's a good challenge, and it's kind of fun. There's also, they've changed a little bit with some of the cutscenes, very, very little bit, but yeah, again, for, you know, towards the goofy. And one thing that definitely deserves mention with this is the choices of words and sentences. Briefly, I'm just going to go into, along the way, among the just point bonuses you can pick up by shooting barrels and such. And the way that's, that works is that there is a letter on the barrel and you then have to click that letter as fast as you can before he goes further. Similar to just aiming at an inanimate, an inanimate object and shooting it before you, you know, the screen moves on. This is still a rail shooter, of course. Some of them are like these books, sort of like dictionaries, and it'll be like, for example, a genre dictionary where, and it'll actually say what you got, you know, unlike the other games where you really you know, you just shot a jumping gold frog and you hope it was good, you know. But in this, it tells you, nope, you got this and this many points from shooting that, or, yeah. Genre dictionary, for example. All the words and sentences will be in the same genre. So, you know, that makes it easier, you know, I'm sure there's some study of the brain that says that makes you be able to type quicker and you know think quicker recognize the words quicker because that's actually part of it with this game some of the words kind of give you pause and you have to just fight through that but at the same time that's part of the fun because some of these words and sentences and just constructions are just hilarious and strange you know you'll get random pop culture references in the middle of everything and like you know words I guess spelt in slightly different ways, like creative ways, like instead of just defense, there will be, you know, hearkening up images of, you know, like a football coach standing there shouting at his team. The word defense will be spelled with a lot of E's, like DEFENSE, and yeah, you gotta type all those E's, and yeah, again, watch the screen, you know, don't mess it up, no reason to lose a perfect over it. So, yeah, it, and like, you know, suddenly there'll be like exclamation points and question marks at the end of sentences and stuff like that. The bosses, I gotta mention the bosses, but first just briefly so I don't forget, the symbols do bring up one bit of a problem with this. I think if this game was made today, you know, this game is from like 2000, the early 2000s. If this was made today, I think it would be made in the different languages so that, you know, I could type it in Danish. I'm not saying I necessarily want a Danish dictionary version of this game or a patch or something, but I do have a Danish keyboard. And the game doesn't account for that. The game accounts for a British keyboard or an American. No, wait, not even that. I think it's, yeah, dictionary, like spelling. UK or American English, and you know, it's that thing with, well, there's a U in courage, or you know, stuff like that. And, yeah, some of the, I've literally had trouble completing the game because of this, because suddenly it'll throw a symbol my way, and I won't be able to use that symbol because the way my keyboard, the way I would normally type it, is not how it's recognized by the game. The game thinks that one of my, you know, you know, you might be aware of this, but we Danes actually have three letters that, you know, y'all don't know about, and, you know, or y'all don't have anyway. And, yeah, they're, they're, like, really weird, and those letters on an international keyboard, or 
whatever you might call it, are actually symbol keys. And yeah, so... And I'm not even sure, like, the game allows me to... Yeah, anyway, it would be a lot of effort, at least, for me to suddenly figure, well, this key is now for this symbol and such and such. And yeah, I think it would be great if the game had, you know, allowed you to say, well, my keyboard really looks like this, you know, why can't you just, like, yeah, basically, like, program it, like, you know, give a keyboard and you could, you know, alter some of the keys at least. Or, yeah, a downloadable patch, something. But, yeah, that's really one of the only things I want to say negatively towards the game. You know, I know in my House of the Dead 2 review I complain about how goofy it is, but... And that's definitely true here, but with this it also kind of owns up to that goofiness. You know, part of the problem with House of the Dead 2 is also that it tries to actually take itself seriously. And... Yeah, you just shouldn't take stuff like this seriously. And this one kind of has some fun with it. I would have liked for them to change more because it does feel a bit weird and out of place with some of the changes, but yeah. It's it's a fun game and it's definitely, you know, an interesting experience to be typing your way through. It's it's essentially a unique game. I don't know of any other game where typing literally is the gameplay, you know, that is how you progress through the game. Now, actually, briefly more on that. The game actually has tutorials to teach you to touch type. That was a lot of teas. And it also has these drills where, you know, it. each of these sort of, well, from the first and through this at least, there have been you know, a couple of new things to each game. This still has the, what's it called, the training mode, and, you know, a boss mode, an arcade and original mode, and several different difficulty settings, I think, or at least, a, at least for some of the other modes, like training and drill and such. And, you know, yeah, it will literally teach you touch typing, excuse me, and, you know, with the same hilarious voice acting, and it can also, you know, yeah, train you pretty well in it. So there's a pretty good amount of, you know, you, you can put in a lot of time in this game and still be doing something different, you know, you're not repeating yourself so much. And that's also, the main game has a good amount of replayability because while you're always typing, the words will change, you know, it's not like you're playing the game, you know, several times and it's the same words each time. There are a couple of different ones to select from, at least from most of the zombies as far as I can tell. I've played it several times and I keep seeing new words. I, there's at least, I don't know, three to five different, you know, ones to choose from, so yeah, you know, you will be surprised. And back to the bosses. They do some fun stuff with this, with with the bosses in this. You know, some of it is just, again, like the main zombies, it's moving towards you gradually and you have to type something before he gets to you. But some of them, I still refuse to give away what exactly it is, but my favorite boss from the second game, he gets a really fun kind of, it's basically, something that's chasing you fast and where before you had just a tiny opening to shoot at him now you have to type long sentences while he's running straight at you and it's just it's a great idea and it's this just hilarious strange it's just it's truly strange to find yourself typing out extensive sentences while someone is rushing towards you, uh, aiming to kill you. You know, it, that is truly something you have to experience to believe just how it, yeah. And, 
you know, it's it's a great, they, they have these, that's actually one of the really fun places, because these extensive sentences, some of them go together, so, like, you'll be typing, you know, today I got that nursery rhyme about Humpty Dumpty, but the ending was, like, way off, and it was just hilarious, it was just completely unexpected, and again, you know, you're kind of laughing at it, but at the same time, you can't waste time just, you know, chuckling, because he is still coming at you, you still have to type, but it is just, yeah, it's a lot of fun, and then there's another boss where it has several points of attack, you know, it has several things that can attack you, and what it does, you know, again, in House of the Dead 2, you had to watch for when the mouths of this thing would open and shoot them, shoot that open mouth. In this, you get questions, and you have to choose the right answer and type it out in time, and yeah, that's, that's pretty fun. That's, that's a very different thing, again, to be doing, you know, it's, it's a game show, but if you get the answer wrong, or you don't answer quick enough, well, you're gonna get bitten. Yeah, and, and the very ending, I refuse to give it away, but it is, it's different. It's certainly different. And then with one of them, you know, usually in this game, you're not technically penalized by typing a word wrong. You don't have to start the sentence over. What you do is, you know, what happens is you lose the perfect counter. It, it resets to zero. But with one of the bosses, you do actually get penalized if you miss even a single. He'll attack you. And if you type the word too slowly, he will also attack you. So it's this great, you know, and it's this sort of thing. They couldn't have done the whole game like this. That would have been just impossible. That, no one would have played for more than one level, because no one's gonna, that's just, that's abusively difficult, you know, but, although it might be an interesting difficulty setting, now that I think about it, but anyway, but with this one boss, you know, also because you've sort of, sort of gotten, like, leisurely, you know, you, you're kind of getting accustomed to, ah, I can do this typing thing, but then suddenly, and it will tell you, you know, don't worry, it'll always tell you what you're supposed to do with the boss. But yeah, you know, suddenly, if you type it wrong, or you type it a little too slowly, he will attack you, so. I suppose that is pretty much what there is to say about the game. Some of the, the pickups are also, like, just, you know, we weird little things. I picked up, like, a zombie costume, for example, and then the cutscenes, you appear as a zombie. And later, I looked like a, one of the civilians I had to save, and yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. But yeah, it's definitely an interesting game, you know, it... I pretty much recommend this to anyone who likes zombies and is either good at typing or wants to get better at typing, because this is a really fun way to get better at typing, you know, because, again, most of these things, or I don't remember if I mentioned this already, but most of the words are actual words, you know, some of them, again, like, I might spell them a little bit differently, but that doesn't happen very often, usually, and, and some of them are like, you know, brainy words, like, you know, could you offhand spell pediatrician, you know, just without thinking about, you know, and, you know, but again, it shows you how to type it, and, you know, for one thing, it reminded you how to spell that word, which might not come across that often. For another, it's now in your fingers how to type out that word, and, you know, third, you just got graded on how fast you type that word, so, you know, it might sadden you a little bit, but on the other hand, you might be thinking, hey, you know, I'm pretty decent at typing, so, yeah, it's a really fun game. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.